welcome to the kitchen. Today we're going to make fire cider. As flu and cold season is upon us, now that it's almost December, today's November 30th, uh, it's a great elixir for keeping colds away and for getting over them quickly when you have them. It's a pretty simple process with simple ingredients and we'll go through every step of it for you so you'll know exactly what to do. Please feel free to comment, uh, send us any questions you might have, and we'll look forward to hearing from you. Thanks a lot. So we're out here in the garden. We're going to clip some fresh rosemary to uh, dry and add to our fire cider. As just a little extra flavor, rosemary has a lot of antibiotic properties, so it's really healthy to use in fire cider, and it's also a good savory addition to other kinds of vegetable dishes you might want to make, to, you know, warm stuff in the winter. So this, here it is, uh, November 30th. Our rosemary still looks fabulous here in New England. So we'll just clip a few sprigs. It's really nice to bring in at Christmas too because it smells so nice. Mm, just lovely. One more, I think should do it. Okay. Here we are, fresh rosemary. These are the ingredients you will need to make your fire cider. We have fresh cut rosemary here. We're going to use the dried rosemary, but I just wanted to show you the difference. between. This is the two tablespoons of dehydrated that we're going to use. You have uh, ground cayenne pepper, ground turmeric, organic ginger, Try to get as many of your ingredients organic as you can. Not all of these are organic. The ginger is, you can tell, the PLU number, which means price lookup, uh, starts with a nine on organic produce. You'll need 10 cloves of garlic. This is a clove, this is a bulb. Use the cloves, which are the pieces that make up the bulb. Uh, one medium organic onion, the juice and rind of one organic lemon, You'll need two jalapenos. These are massive jalapenos, by the way, <laughs> and they're not organic. I uh, couldn't find any. And this lovely thing that looks like an elephant foot is horseradish root. This is powerful stuff, as you'll see when we start grating it. You're going to need raw apple cider vinegar, a quart jar to put it all in. If you're going to use a metal lid, you want a, a piece of wax paper to put between the, the to put on top of the jar when you're done and we'll, we'll show you that later because the apple cider vinegar and the, the ingredients in the fire cider will start to corrode the metal if you don't have the wax paper in there or if you have a plastic lid use that we have an old school grater here uh, if you are fortunate enough to have a nice food processor that'll grate this up in no time you'll save yourself a lot of tears <laughs> Okay, so let's get started. It's important to make sure that your roots in particular are clean. We're going to scrape the outside off anyway, but particularly the horseradish, there are a lot of dirt settles in there. So when you do that, make sure you scrub it down really well first. You're just gonna take a regular old uh, scraper, like carrot peeler, and just scrape off that outside before you start grating it. Ooh, I can smell it. Good stuff. <laughs> I'm gonna grate it right into this nice uh, Pyrex measuring cup. I'm gonna use the largest grate on this. So make sure you take your uh, price tags off your, your food before you start grating. I always like to use a dedicated board for anything pungent like horseradish or onions or garlic or ginger. You don't ever want to use the same board that you use to cut your fruit because your fruit will not taste good. You don't really need to clean out your grater between ingredients because it's all going into the same place. Mm. Oh, that smells good. But if you slap your garlic with the side of your knife, the skin will come right off. 
And then this you want to chop very finely. You can use seeds and all with the jalapenos because remember you're going to strain everything at the end anyway and it'll just give it that much more kick. So the zest of one lemon. Carefully you don't scrape your knuckles doing this because it's, uh, it happens. It's a lot easier to zest your lemon before you cut it. Make sure you get your as many of the seeds out as you can. Some might fall in there, but so what? And one of the nice parts about the lemon afterwards is you can um, use it to deodorize your board. Help get some of that garlic and horseradish and, and ginger out of it. All right, so that's all the ingredients. Let me, uh, give me a minute to clean this up and we'll put it all together. And now through the magic of video, we have all of our ingredients in the proper proportions. So, we're gonna take our garlic, that's 10 cloves of garlic. Doesn't matter what order you put these things in your jar in. It's half a cup of ginger. And again, these aren't exact uh, measurements. They don't have to be. If you're an exact kind of person, then by all means. Um, but if you're the kind of person that you like to eyeball things, then do it that way. So roughly half a cup. Our two jalapenos. And remember, that'll the amount will vary depending on the size of your jalapenos. Remember, mine, unfortunately, are not organic, and they're huge. So I may not put all of it in, but I did anyway. And this is our half cup of horseradish. And this was a large, <laughs> it's a medium onion, but onion was a little large really. So I probably won't put all of this in. Every batch comes out just a little bit differently depending on the proportion and the strength of your ingredients. And all of that depends on where it's grown and when it's harvested and the conditions um, the crops were met with in that year. Whether it was rainy or dry or whatever is going to affect the potency and the strength of your ingredients. I hope there's room for the vinegar. <laughs> it's our uh, zest and juice of one lemon. A seed did get in there, oh well. Extra strength. And then this is our quarter teaspoon of cayenne. Our one tablespoon of ground turmeric. Both organic and two tablespoons of dried rosemary. All right. It's a fresh bottle of apple cider vinegar with the mother, raw. Make sure it gets good and mixed up. Pour. And because this is going to sit for a month, I'm going to use a piece of wax paper and a regular jar lid. The wax paper, remember, is to keep the metal from corroding. And that's it. Give it a little shake, get everything mushed around in there. And in about a month, 
you will have fire cider. So I already put it in the jar, but on second thought, I'm looking at it, and I think some of my chunks are a little big. Not crazy big, but I'd like it a little more blended down. So I'm just gonna toss it in my Vitamix for a couple of pulses and uh, let those flavors really get together. And again, you don't need to go crazy. Whatever's left in the jar, that's fine. Important thing, make sure your lid is on securely. So we turn it on, I have it set on low, which is where you wanna start always. And you can turn it up a little bit. That's good. I'll just pour it back in the jar, seal it up, and put it in the fridge. Do not disturb till Christmas. one quart. Make sure you date it so you remember when you made it because you don't want to start drinking it too early. So this one, because it's November 30th, won't be ready till December 30th. So it'll be good and ready for a toast for New Year's Eve and then for the rest of the winter and it'll keep for as long as you need it whenever you feel a cold coming on or anything like that. You can just start doing some shots of fire cider after you strain it and we'll go, we'll make another video in a month about how to strain it and mix it with a little honey and we'll see you then. So till then, we'll see you again on Wellville Road. Be well, be happy. Bye-bye.